praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we praise the Almighty today. Thank Him for our time of prayer that we had. Believe in the Most High to answer our requests and to move powerfully in the lives of those whom we pray for and to expect great things from our King. Hallelujah. I want to say shalom to everybody. I want to say shalom to you that have joined us by live stream today. Hallelujah. I trust that uh, everyone's week has been blessed and that you've been encouraged in the Almighty and that your needs are being met. It is our prayer that needs of the saints be met. That is a benefit of the Creator, that our needs be met. He doesn't want any of us to have any lack or to go without because we are His people and He looks out for us. He knows what things we have need of before we even ask Him. And so I just want to encourage us with that to always know that the Father is mindful of us. Hallelujah. Well, today we want to share from the scriptures in the book of Yoel, commonly called Joel. And I want to share for the next 30 minutes or so, uh, I'm going to try to share for 30 minutes. Uh, honey, you might have to keep me uh, on, on target. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. But um, during our last Sabbath service, in the midst of the preaching and the teaching, there was a passage that came to me in regards to the judgment of the nations. And I wanted to elaborate on that in a little bit more detail and so for those of you who have your Bibles let's go to the book of Joel chapter 3 and I'm going to read through the first three verses Joel chapter 3 the first three verses I feel the need to share this because Number one, the books of the prophets are books that are not taught enough, and we do not hear enough preaching from these books. And so I feel it's very important that we share the information that the Almighty gave through these prophets. So oftentimes, within the Christian community, a great deal of time is spent in biblical teaching in the writings of the apostles. And very little time seems to be spent in teaching in the prophets, or even reading the books of the prophets, for that matter. But I have discovered that the books of the prophets hold a tremendous amount of information with respect to the things that are coming and things that have transpired. And when we look at the writings of the prophets, what we began to see, I believe, is a larger picture of what Elohim's plan and purpose is. And so I want to touch on some things tonight 
um, in these three verses that are going to speak to us about the purpose mm -hmm. for the nations being judged. So what I want to do, I'm going to read and then we're going to begin to elaborate. So let's go to Joel chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. For then in those days and at that time, when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. And I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people and my heritage, Israel, because they had scattered them among the nations. They have divided my land and cast lots for my people and traded boys for prostitutes and sold girls for wine and drunk it down. When we look at these passages and we deal with it in the context of the entire book, what we see is Yah telling us that in the last days, the latter times, after he restores the fortunes to Judah and Jerusalem, he's going to gather all of the nations, bring them down to what is called the Valley of Jehoshaphat. Now, scholars have said that the Valley of Jehoshaphat is in the Kidron Valley. However, when we look at the term Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat is a word which means Yahuwah who judges. Yaho, that is the first part of Yah's name. Shafat means judge. It's like the book that we call Judges that we read in the scriptures. The name of that book, the Hebrew name of that book is called Shoftim, which is a plural term for judges. A Shafat is a judge. Like Samuel was a Shaphat. Deborah was a Shaphat. So when we look at this word, Yaho Shaphat, anglicized Jehoshaphat is Yaho Shaphat. That word means Yahuwah who judges. It refers to Elohim bringing the nations down to the valley of judgment to the place where he will judge the nations. Now whether it's going to be in the Kidron Valley, I don't know. But scholars have said a whole lot of things about names and places. Some of them have been correct. Some of them have, have not been correct. But what we need to know about this particular valley is that it is the valley where Yahuwah will judge the nations. Now when we look at the first verse, because I like to keep things in context, and it's important that when we read these passages that we keep everything in context. The first verse says, For then, in those days and at that time. Now, when he begins chapter 3, we have to understand that chapter 3 is a continuation of chapter 2. Now, 
most of us who know a little something, something about the Bible, we know that when the scriptures were written, that they were not written in chapters and verses. So when you look in the previous chapter, the end of chapter 2, what you read is a section that talks about what will be going on in the world. It talks about the sun darkening, the moon turning um, like blood. It talks about how that that will be the time of the great and terrible day of Yah. That's when he begins to deal with the wicked of the earth. And as you, as you look at it, especially, matter of fact, I'm going to read verse 30 and uh, 30 through 32. So, so we can get a real clear picture mm -hmm. of why the Most High begins to say, for then, in those days and at that time, when I restore. Because we have to understand, there's going to be chaos in the world. There, there's going to be devastation in the world. But while there's devastation and chaos, there's also going to be deliverance. So I'm going to read from verse 30 of chapter 2 of Joel. And mind you, um, when we begin at verse 30, Prior to verse 30 is where the Most High talks about pouring out His Spirit on all flesh. You know mm -hmm. what we like to uh, read where the reference is made over in Acts chapter 2 and Peter quotes just that small little section there. You know, we like to read that about the Holy Spirit being poured out and signs and wonders and miracles and all of those things. You know, We, we love all that sensationalism. But don't always take the time to understand why the Almighty poured out His Spirit on all flesh. What's the purpose of Him doing that? Why? Because He's trying to get human beings, number one, to repent. He's trying to get their attention to repent because there's something that's going to hit the earth that's going to bring about the wrath of Elohim upon the nations. See, what, what the most, most High does in sin in His Spirit is to give men the opportunity to turn from their unrighteousness and turn to Him. But then after that window of allowing those who are of the world, of the nations, to come into Zion, that's the Messianic Israelite community, you know, he's given an opportunity for the nations to come into Zion. Because after that window of opportunity has been closed and the door has been shut, so to speak, his wrath is going to come. So verse 30, let's begin there. It says, I will show portents in the heavens and on earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and terrible day of Yahuwah comes. So what it's talking about here in verse 30 is that there's going to be some things that's going to hit this earth. There's going to be some things in the heavens that you're going to see that's going to be strange. That's going to cause things to happen in the earth. Right before the great and terrible day, that's when the wrath of the Most High comes upon the world. Mm -hmm. It says, then everyone who calls on the name of Yahuwah shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there shall be those who escape. In other words, there shall be deliverance. Where's deliverance going to be? In Mount Zion, right? Y'all hear that? Mm-hmm. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, that's where the deliverance is going to be. Then it says, as Yahuwah has said, and among the survivors shall be those who call or those whom Yahuwah calls. So there's going to be some survivors. And when it talks about the survivors, it's an indication that there's going to be great devastation. You 
you read over in the book of Isaiah, 66 chapter of Isaiah, and it talks about the dead bodies that will be piled up as a result of the battle that would have taken place. And that battle will be the battle between the kings of the earth and the armies of Elohim being led by the Messiah, Yahshua. Mm -hmm. So it talks about how that among the survivors shall be those whom Yahuwah calls. So what it's saying is that there are those that will be among the nations that Yahuwah will call that will have opportunity to be saved. Now, before this great wrath of Elohim comes, there's going to be the time of what has been called grace. I don't always like to use that term because the grace of Elohim has always existed. Um, no, I have a different interpretation on the concept of the dispensation of grace. Um, Elohim has always been an Elohim of grace. And he has always been an Elohim of judgment. In all eras and in all times. Mm -hmm. um, but at this particular point in time, the Almighty has an open window. The Apostle Paul made a statement, and he said that the times of the Gentiles will be come in. In Romans, matter of fact, let me go to Romans. Just let me pause for a minute. I need to say this so that we can understand that right now there's an open window for those of the nations to come in to Zion. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 11, verse 25. Listen to this. So that you may not claim to be wiser than you are, brothers and sisters. I want you to understand this mystery. A hardening has come upon part of Israel. Until the full number of the Gentiles or the nations has come in. So what Paul is saying here, he was talking about how that there are some unbelieving Israelites who were broken off from the Israelite olive tree. And he said that there's been some hardening that has taken place among a portion of Israel so that the full number of the Gentiles, the term Gentile, that's Goyim, it means the nations, mm -hmm. so that the full number of the nations may come in. Come into what? Come into Zion to be grafted in to Israel. Mm -hmm. Paul talks about the olive tree and that some branches were broken off and others were grafted in. But there's this open window right now mm -hmm. where Elohim is allowing all who would believe among the nations to be saved, to come into Zion. See, we believe that when you get saved, you are grafted in to Israel. That's what we believe. We don't believe that Elohim set up a new church. We believe Elohim sent Yahshua and he enacted the renewed covenant so that Israel may be married again to Yahuwah. That's what Yahshua did. That's what he did. But as a result of those unbelieving Israelites that rejected their king, as Paul saw it, 
because the Most High had already made provision for people of other nations to come into Israel. No, really, honestly, there, there was no need. There was no need for a breaking off of branches to allow people of the nations to come into Israel. The Most High had already made provision for other nations to come into Israel. But there again, Paul is giving an example. He's using Midrash to explain why we've got some unbelieving Israelites and why we have those of other nations coming in. Mm -hmm. That's just that's just Paul's Midrash. When you go reading in the Torah and the prophets, what you find out is that the Almighty had already made provision for people of other nations to come in. Because some people, you know, they have this idea that um, uh, only those who are Israelites will be saved. But the Almighty had made provision where he said, the Edomite, after the third generation from coming into, uh, from, 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 from our Israelite ancestors coming out of Egyptian captivity, he said the Edomite and the Egyptian can come in after the third generation, and the Ammonite and the Moabite after the tenth generation. Then over in Isaiah chapter 56, the Most High said, if the stranger, that's the alien, chooses to keep my Sabbaths, and obey my commandments, if they choose to join themselves to me, he said they'll have a name greater than sons and daughters. And then the Most High said also in the latter part of that 56th chapter of Isaiah, he said that, uh, that as the Most High is gathering together the outcast of Israel, he said, I will gather others also unto them, Amongst those who are scattered. Mm -hmm. So he had already included people from other nations to be a part of Israel. All right. That had already been a part of the plan of the Most High. Now, what I'm, the reason why I'm bringing this out is because right now, there's this big open window where the Almighty is basically um, waiting until that full number of Gentiles become into Zion while he is still at the same time uh, saving and restoring those who are blood descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and bringing them to Messiah. See, all of it's happening simultaneously. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I'm highlighting it is because once that window is closed, then the Almighty is going to gather Zion together and he's going to bring his wrath upon the wicked of the earth. Now, when that great day of Yah comes upon the earth, he's going to deal with the nations. He's going to send all of those judgments such as the Bowl judgments and trumpet judgments that we read about in the book of Revelations. Mm -hmm. All of those things are going to take place. And for those who are interested in wanting to find out the specific judgments that will take place on the nations, you can go read in the book of Revelation, begin at chapter 7 and continue reading. And that's where it starts to talk about the bowl judgments. It will end with the the seventh seal, and that will open up into the bold judgments. But you can read about it there. But um, after these uh, judgments uh, of wrath come upon the nations, then there's going to be a time where Elohim restores the fortunes back to Judah and Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. How is that going to happen? That's when the Messiah establishes his seat of authority mm -hmm. in Jerusalem and we who are his people in Zion we rule and reign with the Messiah but when all of that is taking place there's going to be some judging going on among the nations and the judgment that takes place in what is called the Valley of Jehoshaphat 
is a judgment that occurs because of the persecution and the way in which the nations have ill-treated the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Let me read in verse 2. Joel chapter 3, verse 2. I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. That's the valley where Yahuwah judges. Mm -hmm. And I will enter into judgment with them there. Why? Mm -hmm. On account of my people and my heritage, Israel. I'm going to pause there for a moment. You know, when I was coming up in the things of Elohim many years ago in the Pentecostal Holiness Church, mm -hmm. hearing the messages, as we would call them, hellfire and brimstone messages, and, you know, I said that not, not in jest because I believe in hell, I believe in the lake of fire that says burns with fire and brimstone. I believe that. And, and that will be the final outcome for those who continue to remain rebellious against the Creator. However, when I heard those messages and heard things taught, it was always with the understanding that the Almighty is going to bring this judgment and this wrath upon the nations because of their wickedness and because of their rebellion, because of their rejection of the Messiah. But the, the, the point that was made and the understanding that was received, at least in my mind, and probably in your mind as well, is that Elohim is going to judge the world because of the grossness of the world's sin. In other words, that was going to be the basic reason. But what I'm discovering when I read the prophets that there's a little bit more to this thing than just Elohim judging the nations simply because they rejected him. When we read these passages here in Joel, what we discover is that Elohim's process of restoration, mm -hmm. his restoring Judah and Jerusalem and establishing the kingdom and restoring it back to Israel, is all because of his covenant relationship with Israel. What kind of covenant does the Almighty have with Israel? It's a marriage. Mm -hmm. It's not just some simple covenant. It's not just some simple agreement. It is a marriage. It is a marriage. Yahuwah married Israel. He married us. Y'all catching this? Mm -hmm. We have a marriage yes, yes. with the Creator. He is our husband. Our Elohim, our mighty one, and we are his people, his bride. So now, now, now that we understand that this covenant relationship with the creator is a marriage, mm -hmm. now we can understand why the Most High is restoring the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem. Right. Notice it doesn't say that Elohim is restoring the fortunes of all of those who believe. It's, that's not what it says. It says he's restoring the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem. A specific people. It, is this making sense? Yeah. Okay. So, so, so he's restoring the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem. A specific 
people, his people. But this, this people of Elohim, Israel, Zion, is composed not just of blood descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but is also composed of people of other nations. See, when we understand that the people of Elohim, as most believers understand, we call it the bride of Messiah. All right? The bride of Messiah is the bride of Elohim. That's right. We're Elohim's bride. And so, because that's the case, what Elohim is doing is structuring things and preparing things so that his bride would be in a prepared place and in a prepared position to rule and reign with him. That's what he's doing. So what this thing is all about, this thing is about Elohim having a people in the earth and opening the doors for everyone that's of the nations to come in and be a part of this people. Mm -hmm. But then after the door is closed and he has the full number and he deals with the nations, he's going to deal with the nations because of the nations' treatment towards his wife, Israel. So when we read this text, we begin to understand that the reason for Elohim bringing judgment upon the nations is not only because of their wickedness. Yes, the nations are wicked. Yes, the nations have committed sin. But the core reason is because the nations have treated the bride of Yah in an ill manner. That's right. They have treated the bride of Yah wrongly. And any husband, any husband, that see someone else treat their wife wrongly is going to get hot, is going to get upset, is going to get angry, and is going to look for retribution. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And you got some people in the world, you know, when it comes to uh, being a believer, they feel like that. Oh, well, you know, you got to forgive people for everything that they do. If someone does something, you know, to, to you, you got to forgive them. If someone, no, you know what? If somebody does something to my wife, no, I'm going to do what the word says. I'm going to seek retribution. You say, well, that's harsh. No, I'm just being like Elohim. That's all. Now, y'all can, <laughs> can take that any way you want. You can slice it and dice it any way you want. I'm just telling you. I believe what Torah says. You know, we got a lot of lot of believers out there, a lot of preachers out there that they want they want to read the scriptures and not provide any balance. Like as if when somebody does something to your spouse or to your family, like you don't have a right to protect them. Like you don't have a right to do what's necessary, even if it means take life. You have that right in the scripture to take life to protect your family, to protect your wife, to protect your children. It's nothing less than what Elohim would do. And what we find going on here, when Elohim brings judgment on the nations, the reason why he's going to bring judgment on the nations, I'll read it again for y'all that don't believe me. He says, I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people and my heritage. Wow. He didn't say anything about because of their wickedness or because of their sins. Now, there are the places where he, you know, talks about different types of sins and things and, you know. But the reason why Elohim's going to deal with these nations is because of how they treated his people. Wow. 
because they have scattered them among the nations. They have divided my land and cast lots for my people, traded boys for prostitutes and sold girls for wines and drunk it down. So a number of things that are stated in here as um, the Most High is describing. What the nations did to his people. And I don't have a whole lot of time to elaborate and to bring out all of the specific periods of time that this passage prophetically addresses. You know, I mean, I, I, I could talk about... Uh, slavery in uh, various times in history. You know, we, we, can, we can start from the first century when the Romans, after they had destroyed Jerusalem, that they had took many Judean Israelites as slaves and sold them. We could talk about how many of the Israelites that left from Judea after the Roman, uh, the Romans decimated Jerusalem, how that they went down south, journeyed through Ethiopia, came to West Africa, and how that many of those Israelites that were in West Africa were taken into slavery by the Islamic chieftains and they were sold as slaves. Matter of fact, it was the Islamic chieftains in West Africa that when they began enslaving our ancestors sold them to the Portuguese and then began what has been called the transatlantic slave trade and you had the West African Israelites being scattered to the Americas and into Europe and into many other places. Mm -hmm. That's just a few. But this passage that we read here prophetically speaks to those things. Mm -hmm. The treatment that was done, the ill treatment that was done to Israel, y'all remember. He said, you scattered my people. You, you read that? <laughs> you read that? He said, he says, you scattered. The first thing he says, he says, I'm bringing you into judgment on account of my people, my heritage, Israel, because they have scattered them among the nations. And that's what they did. Mm -hmm. That's what the nations did. See, when we, when we think about all of this, you know, we, we go back to we go back to the source. See, the, the source of the scatterings began with the Assyrians and the Babylonians. The Assyrians took the northern kingdom, removed them out of the land, and that was the first major scattering of the ten tribes. And when the Babylonians came in, had them in captivity for 70 years, they were able to go back, but that same spirit that was on Babylon transferred to the Medes and the Persians, and that transferred to the Greeks. The same spirit continued to carry over. And the Most High was using these nations to correct his people, but the nations, you know, got, got a little overboard in, in, uh, in, 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 in punishing the people, all right? And that incurred the wrath of Elohim that he has. Now, even though the generations of the past are died and gone, that judgment, that uh, anger of Elohim has been reserved for later generations. You say, well, why is that? Because that's just the way Elohim works. The descendants of peoples who have a certain spirit and an animosity against his people and that continue to oppress his people, they pass that same spirit on to their descendants. And unless their descendants get delivered from their sins, get washed in the blood, get filled with the Ruach, 
and begin to become a part of the house of Israel in Yahshua and love him and love his people, then guess what happens? If they don't do that, that same spirit that was on their fathers will be up on them. Because the spirit that is upon the fathers comes upon the children of these nations. And you see, it seems like almost in all of the generations from the time past that there is the same cycle of the same thing that goes on in the world. A continued oppression mm -hmm. of Israel. Why is that? Because the spirit of the fathers of previous generations come up on the sons of the succeeding generations. And the only thing that can break that spirit of oppression is the power of deliverance. Yes, That's the only thing that can break it. Yes. If the power of Yahshua does not break that spirit, then the same spirit is going to come up on the children. Because you notice here that the Most High is bringing the nations into judgment, right? Mm -hmm. He's bringing them into judgment. But the thing we need to notice is <laughs> when he talks about bringing these nations into judgment, he's dealing with a time period that's at the end of the age. Yeah. So this means that there is a consummation or a, a, a process that has led to a consummation or fullness of carrying out certain acts of sin and oppression upon his people. You know, here we are, we are in what, 2020, right? We're, we're, we're 2021, I'm sorry, 2020, 2021. We're in 2021, right? Mm -hmm. The people of 2021 don't know anything about the people of, of, of 596 B.C. or 722 B.C. or, 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 or what, 533, 532 B.C. They don't know anything about these peoples. They don't know anything about the people of 70 CE or 135 CE, the Romans and their destructions of Jerusalem. They don't know anything about that. They don't know anything about those people. Right. But the same spirit of oppression that was upon those Romans or those Greeks or Assyrians in their oppression of the people of Israel throughout the centuries is the same spirit that's on people here today in 2021 that's still oppressing Israelite people all over the world. Mm -hmm. Same spirit. Same spirit. Mm -hmm. And so when the Most High prophesied here in Joel chapter 3, when he prophesies and he says, that I'm going to judge you on account of my people because you scattered them. You scattered them. Not only did you scatter them, but you also divided my land. And y'all going to pay for that. He said, you divided my land. Y'all said, you divided? Yeah, you divided my land. Now, let, let, let me share some information with you. Did y'all know that before, and, and a lot of people know this, but some people don't, do y'all know that before 1948, before the state of Israel was formed, do y'all know that England had that area of Palestine? That they owned it? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. They had that area. See, you, you, you have European nations that, that already had that area. What the most I say, you have divided my land and did what? And cast lots for my people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, there's been, there's been some taking of that land. 
dividing it up, casting lots for it, saying, we we going to take it and, 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 and y'all going to do this and we going to be the ones that's going to control who's going to come in and who's going to go out. Oh yes. yeah, the Most High is going to deal with you nations yes, it's true. that have divided this land and that have cast lots for it. Because you felt like you were the ones in control over the land of the Most High. Mm -hmm. Even to this day, everybody celebrates yep. the state of Israel. And, oh, I know, I know I'm going to lose friends now. But I'm a Bible person. I have to teach the Bible. All right? The only time that the land of Israel will be legitimately, and I'm saying this because of what the scripture says, where it will legitimately be under Yah's control is when Yahshua returns, destroys the kingdoms of the earth, and establishes his seat of government in Jerusalem. Right now, to this day, there is a sect within rabbinic Judaism that does not support the state of Israel because they believe the old school understanding that the only one who can restore Israel back to being a nation under Elohim is Hamashiach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. See, see, so you have those who are Zionists. And those who are not Zionists, those who are Zionists are the ones who believe in the existence of the state of Israel. Those who are not Zionists do not believe in the state of Israel. Mm -hmm. And you know what's interesting, even to this day, the, these uh, non-believing non uh, Jews that... that uh, do not believe in Zionism, they are being heavily persecuted among their own people. You know, among, amongst the Ashkenazi Jewish community today. Yeah. You don't hear a whole lot of talking about them. <laughs> but they, they, don't, they don't believe it. Because, you see, the whole concept of Zionism, which started, you know, to, to really come to prominence in the uh, at the end of the 1900s and the beginning of the, 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 the or, or shall I say, at the, at the end of the 19th century or the end of the 1800s, going into the 1900s, you had this rise in Zionism, the return to Israel for statehood. And the Zionist movement were the ones who began to work out some deals with Britain so that they could have the state of Israel. They were that all of that was all of that was in the works and was in planning in the 1920s. But then you have these Jews, non-Zionist Jews, that believe only the Messiah can bring us back to the land of Israel. And restore all things. Mm -hmm. So for us that don't believe. That the state of Israel is a good thing. It's because we believe only the Messiah can restore it. For us. We believe that the nations. Have done just what Elohim said in this passage. They have divided my land. And cast lots. Mm -hmm. For my people. 
So when we look at the judgment that's going to come upon the nations, we need to kind of change our focus. Right? We need to change our focus. We have to understand that the reason why Elohim is going to hit this world with judgment, with his anger, with his wrath, is not only because of the wickedness of their sins, it's because of how they treated you and how they treated me. That's why. And the thing that we need to really be mindful of is, especially those of us who understand who we are as being Israelites, and it's important that the world understands who we are as Israelites too, because with all of, 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 of the brutality that has been coming upon us who live in the United States of America, not to speak about those who live in other uh, nations of the world, but for at least for us who live here in the United States of America, when you, when you persecute those who are blood descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, especially those who are in the Messiah, you don't realize that you are heaping up the wrath of Elohim upon you, and he is going to deal with you. That's why I say it's important that you read the books of these prophets. There's a lot that these prophets are saying that, are, that is not being talked about, that is not being addressed, that is not being preached. Yeah. And the reason why it's not being preached is because there is a message from a Western Christian perspective that tailors its perspective only to deal with things as it relates to the, the, the quote-unquote church and sins of nations. That's it. But we need to understand, Elohim is doing all of this stuff is because he is preserving his bride. And he's going to deal with all of those who mistreat his bride. Amen. Yes, they are sinners. Yes, they are paganistic. Yes, they are disobeying his commandments. But there's more to it than just that. We need to be mindful that we don't just go around persecuting folk. And, and, and a lot of the stuff that's happened to many of our brothers and sisters here in the United States of America that's come out of uh, West Africa, the West African Israelites that have come here, because by the way, for those of you who are not familiar with it, y'all need to wake up and smell the coffee. Uh, you know, <laughs> many of us here that uh, are from slavery, we're Israelites. We're Israelites. We have to understand that. And the West African Israelites, we come from a stock of people called the Igbo people in West Africa. They still have their Israelite culture to this day. And when they took the people from West Africa, they took the people primarily from the region where the Igbo people are located. That's where the majority of West Africans came from. So most of us that are here, if not all, most of us that are here, we have Israelite blood. And the persecution that we receive, the brutality that's placed upon us, the suffering, all of the stuff that has gone on in our lives that our ancestors have dealt with, the Most High hasn't forgotten about it. The Most High is going to deal with those who have brought about the persecution. That's why it's important uh, for those who hate us because of our color. They need to get right with Elohim because you are persecuting Israelites. And many in churches that talk about that if you bless Israel... You'll be blessed, but if you curse Israel, you'll be cursed. Those of you who don't know who we are, because uh, most of us have not known our heritage, our lineage. But many of us are coming to an understanding, and we are excited about it. But what that says to those who have oppressed us is, 
there's a judgment coming to you that have oppressed us. Not because I said it, but because of who we are and because of what the scriptures have said. And the word to you is, you need to repent. You should repent anyway because it's wrong to oppress anybody. But because you are oppressing descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then you read the Bible. <laughs> you know what the Bible says. I don't need to explain it to you. But I do want to encourage us in Zion. That we understand what Elohim is saying in the scriptures. And because Elohim is wrapping things up, you who are blood descended Israelites that are not in the Messiah, you need to get right with Elohim. Because if you are not right with Elohim, if you don't receive the Messiah, Yahshua, you will be cut off just as well, even though you are a blood descendant. Just because you're a blood descendant Israelite doesn't guarantee you place in Zion if you're not going to be obedient to the Creator and receive His Messiah that He sent. You'll be cut off just as well. We don't want to ever get that twisted. But we do need to teach the scriptures and we do need to lay some context to what the prophets have said because there has to be an understanding presented to Zion and to the nations in regards to what Elohim is saying. The things we see going on in our world today, this is not by surprise. This is not happenstance. This is not because, oh, well, you know, Elohim just, uh, you know, just, just allows stuff to happen. No, everything that happens, Elohim is mindful of. Elohim is aware of. And Elohim already knew about before it even came. Mm -hmm. And I believe without a shadow of a doubt. A lot of times the things that hit our world is a part of Elohim's wrath because of what is going on in the world. You say, well, I thought you said we were in a time of grace. We are. But Elohim is sovereign. Sometimes Elohim does things because he wants to give wake-up calls. I trust that we heed his wake-up call. He loves you, and he is concerned about you having fellowship with him. And with that, we're going to close. Let us pray. Father, we do thank you for your mercies, your kindness, and your goodness to us. We thank you for the scriptures. We thank you for the revelation you. that we receive from the scriptures. Thank you. We thank you that it teaches us your heart and your mind, and it instructs us in the way that we should go. I trust that the teaching that has been shared today has been insightful, that it has caused Zion to think, that it has caused the unbeliever to reconsider what the scriptures are actually saying and why Elohim is going to bring judgment on the nations. I pray, Father, that you would touch the unbeliever to repent and to come into the fold. I pray for the backslider to return and come back into the fold. And I pray that you would touch your people everywhere, that we would take courage and trust you that you are watching out for us and that you are supporting us. You are blessing us because you are our Elohim and we are your people. In the mighty name of Yahshua, we do thank you. Amen. Well, we thank each and every one of you for watching and trust that you've been encouraged and enlightened by the teaching today. I know that some of the things that we share and that we teach, to some of you, it may be new information. And uh, that's just simply because 
uh, there's some things that we have been uh, made aware of in regards to who we are as being a part of the stock of Israel and many are unaware of that that it has caused you to become uh, inquisitive and to want to learn more and uh, I want to encourage each one of you who may be watching us for the first time to um, go to our website at www.ncmmi.20m.com and uh, go to the Written Word Library. There are a number of biblical resources that we have there. Uh, also, there's a number of articles and loads of information that's there that I believe that will aid in answering some of the questions that some of you might have uh, in regards to the things that we have been talking about and discussing and teaching. We want to be able to provide an explanation and uh, help you to have clarity in regards to the things that we are discussing. Well, if this teaching has been a blessing to you, we definitely uh, ask that you would share donation. Uh, the website that we presented at www.ncmmi.20m.com. You can go to that website. You can uh, make a donation and share by clicking the donate button. Um, <clears throat> also, you could go to Cash App. Uh, our Cash App code is dollar sign NCMMI. Uh, your donations help us to be able to continue to do what we're doing a little bit more effectively. And uh, it assists us in being able to minister to those who are less fortunate so that we might fulfill and carry out what the Most High wants and desires. Well, we thank you so much again for watching. Trust that you've been encouraged. And do tune in again with us. You can uh, join us on this Sabbath at 12.30 p.m. for our Sabbath gathering and celebration. Well, the Most High be praised. Shalom.